Greetings and welcome to the power of vintage. I really, really love this Amiga 1000. It is an awesome computer. I've had a blast playing around with it, using it, and, and really this is one of my uh, daily driver Amigas. I, I just am absolutely in, in love with this guy. However, I would love for it to be <clears throat> just a little bit better. And this arrived today from Germany. This will help make this even more favoriteur, a more favorite, a favoriteur computer for me. All right, let's open this up, take a look at what's inside and get it inside this guy. So as I mentioned, we'll open this guy up in just a second, but this just arrived from Germany today. One of the things I have to comment about the story on, on what's been going on with, with me and my love-hate hate love hate affair with the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, whenever I get stuff from Germany in particular, uh, and, and even from Asia in many instances, so because you know we all know that there's a lot of uh, vintage computer stuff that I like to source. Many, many people like to source from overseas. What I find is that there's always a signature required for delivery. And my lovely delivery person doesn't seem to ever bring anything with a signature to the door. And so when I, when I see tracking on this guy or, or other, other um, packages in the past, I have to go to the post office about 35 minutes away from my home, a drive, 35 minutes away from my home in order to pick this thing up. Um, pick up any packages that is in this case today I got tired of it and so I saw that this is supposed to be out for delivery today and I waited outside I saw the the poster truck drive by my house one direction the on the other side of the street and I knew that in a few minutes he'd be coming down the other side my side of the street and so <laughs> I decided to wait outside and see what would happen actually see if if he actually would put this in the in the post box or actually walk up to the door to get the signature because it said signature required for this funny thing is uh i saw him pull the package out look at it and then stick it back down and, and get ready to drive off when i then walked down and said hey hey wait a second i ambushed him and said do i need to sign for that and he said oh yeah yeah here here you go look, you sign right here he was about to drive off and just take this back to the post office. And uh, I actually have had a, at least two packages, two packages returned to senders because they get, uh, well, they, they are told, the, the senders are told that they're undeliverable. Well, it's undeliverable because my post guy doesn't want to walk to the door to get signatures. That said, I was able to find this out. Hopefully uh, it's, uh, they'll know that I'm watching a little more carefully in the future and they will, they will actually bring things to the door. All right. That said, let's open this guy up. What is this? That's a long story. Long story uh, about postal delivery. But we'll open this guy up. Came all the way from Germany. And it's associated with an Amiga 1000. If you've taken a look at the, well, the title of the video probably has it in it already. Or I'll try to come up with a clever way of describing what this is and how it's going to be awesome for my Amiga. Let's see. All right. There we are. Yes, I'm using scissors, not a scissors. All right, we'll find something else. Another not knife thing, but this has worked well and it is working well. There we go. Got that side open. There we go. Of course, got to get down here too. There we 
we have it. And this is some packing. The little jumpers. And this right here is what we're talking about here. Pull this guy out, we can take a look at him. This is an Amiga 1000 Rejuvenator, Rejuvenator Replicator. I am so stoked. This is gonna be awesome. What this does, this here allows for more chip RAM to be added to an Amiga 1000. With the right Agnes, you can actually add two megabytes. With the Agnes I have, I'll add one megabyte at least initially, since two megabyte Agnuses are a little more difficult to find and a little more pricey. That said, getting more chip RAM in the Amiga 1000 is one of the things that I think will help make it a little more functional, especially when you know, doing the most important thing, which is playing games and being able to play more games, more awesome Amiga games on this, the Amiga 1000. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to get this puppy installed. We'll do a little bit of a jump cutting to getting the Amiga 1000 open up. You know, guys, you don't need to see that all over again, right? Right. All right. We'll jump cut to there. Okay, so first things first, let's get this daughter board out. We are opened up, ready to go. I didn't want to take the power supply out. I'm lazy, but you know what? I don't think it's going to matter too much. If I need to take it out later, I can take it out later. This guy is very interesting. Once we get this out, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to take out the chips that are going to be replaced and put into the rejuvenator. We'll get those placed in, get this guy put in place, and then go from there. All right, so this... I'm just looking at it underneath, just kind of seeing where it's going to bind up so I know where to put the pressure. Oh, that was a lot easier than I was expecting. Very cool. And this is the one, the only daughter board. Lovely. We will set him over to the side. And next, I want to see, we have the rejuvenator. And this guy will fit in like this. Uh, let me see. Yeah, something, yeah, like this. All right, so we're gonna to need to pop out. This is going to be the Denise. This is the Agnes, which we won't need anymore. Wait, no, this is the Agnes. This is Paula, this is Denise. So you're gonna fit over here. Oh yes, gotcha. Oh, I see, like so. so way over here. You know what, I'm gonna take out that power supply connector. Mm -hmm. And his, these guys are, yeah, I just don't want to be pulling on the, there we go. I got it to move a little bit. So I want to be pulling on the, the wires coming out. It's a surefire way to potentially uh, pull it, yank out wires. <laughs> This is inconvenient, and doing it on camera is even more inconvenient. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now 
let's get the other one up. There we are. Whew! That was unfun. All right. So next, let's pull out. This is going to be the Paula. We're just going to twist. Very gentle. These probably have never been taken out of their sockets. Judging by how they feel, they are in snug. Sounds crunchy. Almost there. Almost there. Let's get you, see if we can't get you to, there you go. Maybe. There we are. Perfect. Pins look awesome. Socket looks good. All right, we'll set you over here, off to the side, right there. And then we need to remove the Agnes. Ooh, crunchy. If any of you, I was telling you this story, look at this, uh, pins look good, no bent pins, not that I'm going to need this for the Agnes. If any of you have had uh, similar issues with your own postal service, share your lovely stories, your horror stories, <laughs> in the comments below. I really love this computer. And you know, honestly, the, the, the story behind this rejuvenator and how it was built and how the team of people connected with the original creator to, to help rejuvenate the rejuvenator. It's just really super cool. You know, this, the, the Amiga 1000, I mean, the, the 2000 is an amazing computer. From everything I've seen, I don't own one, but it seems like an amazing computer, right? But it's just a beige, bo beige box. It has an Amiga logo on it, yes. But it's kind of a beige box. The 3000 has a little more style. 4,000, it's another kind of beige box. Looks very PC-like, right? And in the early 90s, that's kind of what you wanted to do. You wanted to look PC-like, right? Now, this Amiga 1000 is just, it's just gorgeous. It's just a super gorgeous computer. Absolutely awesome. I can totally see why someone would really, really, really want to keep theirs around. All right, so we have this chip here. I'm going to scoot this over here. Now, I'm thinking, do I want to put it in first or later? I think I'd like to put it in now. So we're going to just zoom in here. And these are just basically pass-throughs. Take a look at this, make sure that we're... I like these nice turn pin sockets. I know some people don't like them as much. I really like the turn pins. And I'm gonna get my eyes on. pressure on this guy. The last thing I want is to damage one of the pins and have to 
do some repair work on a, a broken pin. Just trying to see where it's binding up. Okay. There we go. We got it in. Boom. There goes Denise. And here is Paula. Mr. Ceramic Paula. And you went in just fine. All right, and I have my Fat Agnes here. This guy. And here's the pin one dot. Pin one is right there. So, nice even pressure to get him in the socket, and it looks good. Lovely. All right. The last chip that's needed to be populated is the ROM chip here. I have two options. I have a 2.0 and a 1.3. I think I'm going to start with the 1.3, and if I want, just to keep it kind of uh, a little more period correct, if I want to go, you know, with hard drive capabilities, I might go 2.0, or I'm, eventually I might go to, you know, 3.2 or 3.1 or whatever. At least initially, I want to go with 1.3. And obviously, if I ever got myself a Pesciero or something like that. Think that they're they're compatible with the latest version of the Pesciero 2 is compatible with this guy but uh, then I could consider having some ROM switching going on or if I use the go back to using the um, what's it called Pi Storm that's what it's called try using the Pi Storm again obviously I can it doesn't matter what I have here because I can just bypass it and have it on the Pi Storm I, Amiga OS 3.2, 3.2.1, I think is what it is. All right, let's just, again, make sure everything's lined up. Okay. We're going to use my little trick I like to use. It's just to... Use a flat surface. We're just going to slightly bend them in a little bit. That should help out because they're a little wide. Again, I have had some situations in the past. Apply a little too much pressure, slip and boop, bend a leg or two or even break a leg off, which I don't want to do with this. There we go. Feels good. Pin one's up here, aligned. Here we go. Whew, that was fun. Now we have all the chips in. Let's jump back to the board. All right, so something that I'm gonna to need to do at some point, and I might as well start do it now while the case is a little less populated, is I do need to get the RF modulator lid off. because so I'm gonna to need to access a few locations in here. There we go, off to the side. Now, comes the really gymnastic -y part. And this is where I remove this. And we're trying to, this is like Tetris on steroids because you gotta get everything to fit into place in all these locations across the entire board. All, the all right, at this point, I should have been reading the instruction manual a little more carefully or at least watching the instruction video. A little more carefully because the long pins the long extended pins that would originally feed into the daughter board that will then feed into the rejuvenator there are height gap 
um, locks on the top of them that needed to be slid lower in order for the rejuvenator to sit lower or closer to the motherboard. And I'm going to struggle for a while because I didn't adjust accordingly and didn't read the manual. Same time. Whew. Let's see. Can we do it? Sure hope so. Huh. I'm wondering, do I need to remove anything? Hmm. I'm going to look underneath and see if I can't see where we're at. All right. I have just come to the conclusion that the power supply needs to be removed. Let's get that done. I'll do that off camera. All right, I have the back plate off, power supply out. I think it'll be easier to leave this in here because th these guides will help, I believe. It's nice to have that as a reference point, to be honest. These appear like they need to come off, these posts. And that <laughs> means that I do need to take this out. All right, man, I am learning so much. All right, so we've gotten out of the case. Nothing, in, <laughs> nothing was damaged, just a lot of gymnastics. And to be honest, I'm not gonna risk destroying the case uh, to, to just get it on camera. I am not that awesome of a disassembler and YouTuber to be able to do that or risk that. All right, we'll get these tabbies straightened up. So we're gonna need to take off the RF shield on the bottom. There we go. Just need to find all of the spots where it's binding up. There's one over here, hidden by this capacitor, or hidden to me. There we go. Is that everything? Oh, this is the last one in the back. There we go. And we have underneath, it's a beautiful circuit board. screws that are in those lovely posts. So I am just going to move this up to here. All right, and that makes it easy from here on out. Yeah, we just drop it. Yeah, here we go. Perfect. Set that screw off to the side, put this post over here. Everything is now finally ready to put this puppy in. You know what? I am going to take this. This is what it, the packing material came in. We're going to put this underneath. This capacitor just a little, looks a little wonky, or at least for this. Ooh, that actually looks kind of good.
All right, so the video instructions from the individual who built this said to kind of start at this end. Oh, wow, well, that did it. All right. Are we in the right place here? I'm thinking this is gonna, that capacitor is gonna bind up a little warm solder, uh, soldering iron to move that guy. We're back. <laughs> oh, lovely. This does look right. And this guy is. Problem is, you got to get it kind of aligned everywhere at once. That's the fun part, right? You are right. That is easy. These sockets actually are looking pretty good. It's these down here that are having the trouble. That's where I'm feeling the binding up. And I am just crawling around on the floor near this stuff to see, make sure I can actually get these guys in place. something. That sounded better. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. It is looking like we got everything. And the last thing to line up, just make 100% certain, is the sockets down below. These three guys. And they need to go in deeper on the chip sockets over here. I just want to make sure that this is The nice thing about this is, is because of how it's structured, I mean, it, this makes it harder, of course, but the positive side is you're not gonna put too much, it's the pressure spread out quite a bit. All right, Whew. 
That was one heck of an installation. Whew. Let's take a break. For the some. next part I have here is I got the, these a couple, these little clips, these little clippies here to connect. I have, there's 28 megahertz. I'll make him the green one. 20 megahertz is the green one. And then RMB clocks. We'll make him the white one. All right. And according to my handy handy manual here, the 20 megahertz goes to pin eight of the IC at U9G. And we need to find U9G. U8G, huh. U8G is right here. And rum, rum blocks, RMB, RMB clocks goes to pin one. There. to find U9G and then the 12 volt one is only 12 volts black. I seem to find the 12 volt one. So this is U9G here. We'll connect to pin eight, which is the first pin on the back side. There we go. <clears throat> and then we have the 12 volts here. And 12 volts goes to the disk drive side of capacitor 76. are. Those are the two for RMB clocks and 28 megahertz and the disk drive side of capacitor C79 or C76. Unfortunately C76 is not identified by the silk screen. It is the capacitor located between C77 and C75. Imagine that. <laughs> between the power supply connector and the disk drive power connector. Aha. That makes more sense. That means it is here. So 77 is that guy. 75 is that guy. And so 12 volts will go to the disk drive side of this capacitor to get to 12 volts. If I can get this to clip, uh, is that on? That is very not on. There we go, that's better. That's better. All right, this is the product ready for testing. We're gonna move over to the computer screen and get this thing plugged in and check it out. All right, here we go. We'll zoom in over here to this guy. And 
we'll first plug in the PSU gently. plugged in and then plug in the PSU everything's good let's flip the switch and see what happens change the VGA switcher ooh something's happening Cross your fingers. Well, positive note, a signal is coming out, but it isn't working. Only I just read instructions ahead of time. Let's try that again. Okay. This is what I did wrong because I didn't read the manual well enough. If you see these pins, these gold pins here with the orange spacers on them, those spacers need to be pushed all the way down as I started doing already. As you can see, <laughs> the sockets that were in the, uh, the board itself, uh, some of them have been left behind, but that's okay. We can still align it just fine, so I'm not too worried about that. These I need to move down now. And I need to figure out a nice, simple way to do that. I'm just, I'm just, I was so excited to get this going. I'd actually watched the video, I don't know how many times, and this part I must have skipped over too quickly. There's even some, <laughs> if I'd read the manual all the way through to the end before starting to install this, I would have read the troubleshooting on how, what are some methods for actually doing this because this is considered one of the hard things to do as to how do you get these things to go down. And there's examples of using a hair dryer to soften them up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you don't need to see my hand. We'll just Three skip hours later. And here we are, done. Or at least done with the part of moving the stoppers down a little bit lower. Let's get the board on now. All right then. Now, these are in the right places. Let's get this thing resituated. And we, we try all over again. And I will adjust off camera because this is a bear and you don't want to see me struggling back and forth for the next 30 minutes. We'll jump to this being installed. Like now. Three hours later. While it wasn't exactly three hours later, it was over an hour and 45 minutes to get the thing fitted in place. With the the stoppers or whatever you want to call them, the, the height gap adjusters or caps, whatever, in place, it, it held the pins a little more closely together. With them further down to the bottom towards their base, the pins are a little more flexible and you get one pin out of place and it's, it won't go on. I only bent one pin once, was able to straighten it out and get it on. But literally, it took over an hour and 45 minutes in order to get this put together. Not for the faint of heart, 
but let's take a look at the results. All right, it is the next day. I was able to get it, uh, uh, the, the rejuvenator situated properly. It took a good probably two hours. I had started recording, as you probably saw. I'll probably include some of the footage. And then my battery died on my phone, and well, you know, I <laughs> it didn't <laughs> didn't record the rest uh, just because I wanted to get this done, get it working. But it is functional, and it is working awesomely. So we're gonna run some Amiga test kit here. Let's just boot this up. I actually have 1.3 ROM, a 1.3 ROM in this guy. Again, just to keep it kind of similar to era specific. Boom, there we go. And requesting the workbench, <laughs> I love it. So no longer asking for a kickstart disc. Pull up Amiga test kit. I need to make certain that I have speaker plugged in and I have the right audio out. As you can see here, let's take a look. I'll zoom in a little closer. Start with an F1 memory. We got one megabyte of chip, woohoo! And half a megabyte of slow, which is awesome. It's fantastic. I'm not gonna worry about, I test tested it last night. Everything's working gloriously. Let's uh, go to audio. I just wanna hear the audio. Hey, it works. But everything is working wonderfully. <laughs> I'm just just stoked about this guy. This is fantastic. All right, I can now run one megabyte chip RAM requiring software. Most of the games in my case, but I'm just stoked. This is awesome. Well, this is the end of this video here, or at least after I get talking here, because I, I, I want to say a few words. The computer, the, uh, the Amiga 1000 with Rejuvenator installed is on my desk now in its position of glory and awesomeness. And I'm very delighted for the, the capabilities that this helped, helped out add to this computer. This is the, the daughter board from that computer. I'll be uh, keeping that safe and in a good safe place. And uh, that'll be just how I end up using this computer for the long term, is using that with that rejuvenator, rejuvenator in there. So that can become more, even more so of a daily driver Amiga for me. Absolutely love that, that's fantastic. Is it a life-changing thing? Not in, a, not in the least. Is it something that I, I am enjoying? Absolutely. And, and that brings me to another topic here, really focusing on and thanking those of the community, this community, the vintage commu computing community that are out there actually designing, building, making these things. Not necessarily always those that are selling it, because obviously there are those who are selling it and that, that makes this available to us, but even more so to the people who are developing, putting the, in the effort and, and designing these things, these various different upgrades that are that are put in place uh, in, in, very, in, in all the different computers, whether it be uh, the Amiga 1000 with this rejuvenator board, the Passiero 2 that I see that's out there as well, that's super cool. My Atari 800 and the incognito cards. Uh, there, there's, I can name any vintage computer and with that vintage computer, there would be a number of different potential upgrades or tinkerings, fixes, whatever you want to call it. Replacement power supplies that exist. Replacement this, replacement that, because these computers that eventually are going to break down at some point in time. And having this kind of capability to be able to keep them running and even tinker with them and upgrade them, it's just, it's just absolutely a blast and it makes this hobby even more enjoyable. And, and as such, I want to thank that community. First and foremost, by thanking the, the community that helped build this, and design and build this rejuvenator board, the rejuvenator two board in this case. First off, Greg Tibbs, he's the gentleman who designed the original one and actually helped the team that built this and designed this the second time around. And my, from my understanding, I'll put a video, a link to a video here uh, from the, t the folks that, or the gentleman who kind of headed up that team, it seems like, uh, on Amiga Love, um, that YouTube channel Amiga Love, uh, where he talked about the, the journey for this, which is so cool that just listening to and understanding where they went and and learning about how to build this thing was so super cool. 
I know the Virginia Minor 2 team, Joe Carter, Matthias Heinrichs, Kristen Stitch, Matt Martin, Adrian Garay, Marco Booth, Marco Both. I, I, if I butchered your name, please forgive me, but I, I really, really appreciated that effort that you put into this. And, and then Andreas from Ami Bay, uh, Ami Bay, Ami Bay, whatever you want to call it. He's the gentleman who built this one for me and uh, it was selling these things. And these, these, this ecosystem, these folks are not getting rich off of this stuff. If you look at the, the, the market size, the amount that the individuals are selling this for, this is not a get rich quick kind of scheme. This is people, this, this is, these are, these are people who are doing it because they enjoy this. They're doing it because they love this. And they're basically, if they charge you money, in most fences, it's just to recoup their costs and maybe make a little bit for their time. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate all of those of you who are contributing to this community, especially. I will, I do my, my little bits and pieces. I publish any of my 3D printing designs to Thingiverse. So if I help out any of you, please know that that's the, the least I can do for, for, for you guys. So again, I wanna close this by thanking the community, thanking all of those, all those of you. Hopefully some of you see this video and, and, and truly feel that this is, this is my heartfelt thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'll close just by saying, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. If you didn't, put it in the comments below. If you loved it, put it in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe if you liked it or want to see more content. Have a fantastic day today. Bye-bye.